Game Diaz is back in the studio today, but this time with a wallet from the keyboard. Now they have boards to fit every budget, but this one is their cheapest mechanical offering. What makes this board unique though, is its long list of quirky features. The Game Deus Hermes E2 is a compact, multicolor mechanical keyboard that retails for roughly $70. And if you're interested in this product and decide you want to purchase it by the end of this review, then please consider using our affiliate links to do so. It is your standard 10 keyless design with an added function row, and it's one of my personal favorite layouts. I don't really have a need for that number pad, but I do like the more compact style. It has a metal backplate, but it doesn't look like a metal backplate. It looks like plastic, and that raises the question, why go through the added expense of having a metal backplate if it doesn't look the part? So I think if it was a little more polished, it may raise the the look and feel of the product a little bit. The lack of a braided cable also detracts from that quality aspect a little bit. And that's not to say that every keyboard needs a braided cable, but it definitely helps. This one in particular is especially thin and flimsy, and it definitely doesn't speak volumes to the quality of the product. And the branding is also a little bit obnoxious. And this is, from what I've noticed, a reoccurring theme with GameDS products. Now, let's be honest, GameDS is for the most part a newcomer to this territory and they manufacture budget peripherals. You just want it to look subtle and look good and perform admirably, which that second aspect GameDS for the most part does well. So I think they would do better to maybe make the branding a little bit more uh, obscure or just not as in your face, at least till they get to a point where they're a household name and people want their name broadcast it on their product, but I think for the majority of people, that's not the case. There are a surprising number of features considering this is a budget-oriented device. The multicolor functionality, if you remember at the beginning of the review, I said multicolor and not RGB. It is not RG RGB, they call it a seven-color board, which is interesting considering I only count six colors, not sure what that's all about, but each row is an individual color and that cannot be changed. There's only one lighting effect and that's breathe. And you can also dim them and, and make them brighter. But other than that, there's no lighting effects and it's not supported by the Hera software. It does have mechanical switches, which is of course the reason why you're spending $70 on a keyboard. You want those mechanical switches. Now, from what I can tell, this is not your standard mechanical switch. I've done a lot of research on these. They could possibly be dare you switches, but again, the jury's still out on that. Uh, I wasn't able to really get a good look at the branding on the switch. It's just a tiny logo and it does feel most closely related to a Cherry MX Blue, uh, at least on this particular board, but they do offer it in a black, brown and red switch variant as well. And they're reportedly good for 50 million actuations. But let's get to those quirky functions I mentioned at the beginning of the review. So first of all, the windows and function key are swapped. Typically you find the windows key over on the left side of the board, but they moved it over to the right side, which I don't really know why they would do that. The only thing I can think of is you're more likely to hit that windows key over on the left side because your left hand is over there. It doesn't really come over onto the right hand side very much. So that could possibly be a good feature for most people. But even besides that, you do have the ability to switch off the windows key by entering game mode. And as far as I can tell, game mode only disables the windows key. You just hit function and the windows key and now the windows key does nothing. And it also shuts off the lighting module for the windows key individually. So if it's lit up, you know the windows key is operable and if it's off, it means it won't do anything. If you look closely at this symbol, I bet you'll never guess what this is supposedly trying to represent. Once I tell you, you can probably see it, but it's a right click key. You press the key and it right clicks the mouse. For the life of me, I can't think of a scenario where that would possibly be helpful. What also adds to the ambiguity of the purpose of this key is the fact that it is only usable when the keyboard is not in game mode. If you guys have any idea what this could possibly be used for, let me know in the comments below because it is very curious. There's also a function to swap the arrow keys and the WASD keys. It really does exactly just that. You press that function and now your arrow keys down on the right side are WASD and the WASD keys are your arrow keys. Again, no idea what that could possibly be used for, but the function is there. 
And then finally, the most curious feature of this board is the keyboard lock function, which is on the uh, function 11 key. And when you press function and that key, it locks the entire board. Every single key on the board is completely inoperable and you cannot use it again until you press the function key and the lock key again. It's not a Windows lock key, it's a keyboard lock key. And again, I don't know the purpose behind this function. The only thing that comes to mind is maybe if you're cleaning the board and you can clean between the keys without worrying about uh, actuating them, but at that point, just unplug the keyboard, right? I, don't, I really don't know what this could possibly be used for. What I can tell you is that my kids definitely love it. Now, if you have small children, you know that they love anything that makes noise or gives feedback or lights up, and a keyboard does all of those things. So if I set them on my lap, the only thing they want to do is play with the keyboard, which obviously can be a problem. So for this very, very specific scenario, it's actually incredibly useful because they'll sit on my lap and use their own keyboard and I don't have to worry about it actually doing anything on screen. And I can leave it plugged in so that it can light up for them and, and they can enjoy it. Again, a very specific scenario and I highly doubt that's what this key, this function was uh, intended for. My experience with the board was pretty much what I expected. It's a budget oriented board. It does what it's supposed to and not much else. The switches, while close to an MX Blue, are definitely the most different of all the Cherry MX clones that I've experienced. They give this really loud and drawn out echo, this like metal sounding echo when you press the key. You can still hear it for a solid second, maybe a second and a half. I noticed they're a little bit lighter than an MX Blue equivalent and that it takes less force to actuate the key. And I also noticed they feel a little bit snappier. At the exact point of actuation, you feel a more definitive snap. It's very hard to describe, but I definitely notice it. The keycaps also give us something to talk about. I notice the spacing is a little bit tighter between the keys. They don't uh, have that cone shape that most other keyboards have. They go almost completely straight up and down. That gives you a little bit more surface area to work with, but it could also raise the, the possibility of an erroneous fat finger key press. They do feel a little bit more like a cheap plastic. They don't feel like your traditional PBT or ABS material. The icons are a little bit cryptic as well. I mean, most of these, you don't know what they do until you use them and you have to figure it out yourself. That's obviously not the purpose of an icon. The icon is supposed to give you a small picture that you can glance at and know exactly what it does. Uh, these definitely don't do that. The lighting is sufficiently bright. It's definitely not the brightest board I've ever used, but it gets the job done. I also noticed the illumination is not equal across the entire key. So those icons I just mentioned are not going to be lit up like the letters themselves. And this is just the nature of mechanical switches with a lighting module. For most mechanical switch designs, you can't set the light in the center because that's where the mechanical plunger is. So it sits on top, which is why you see the letters raised to the top of the key. And the icons being so far down really don't benefit from any lighting at all. Usability is perfectly fine. As I mentioned, it's a keyboard. It does exactly what it's supposed to. I do notice it slides around on the desktop a little bit more than I'd like, except when those feet are raised up because it has rubber on the feet, but curiously, there's no rubberized material on the bottom of the board toward the top. It's only at the front of the board that you get that. So it does move around more than I'm used to. I think $69 is fair, but I'd only consider it a bargain if found for less than $50. Keep in mind, this is a very heavily saturated part of the keyboard market. There's a lot of good options out there, so definitely do your research before purchasing this one. I like the board, but there's a lot of good options out there. And if you wanna see some of our own reviews of those same keyboards, then check out these other video reviews here. And if you want to catch our future content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and then hit that bell icon so that you'll be notified when our new content is ready to watch. We do giveaways uh, as often as we can, so check those out in the video description. If we're running one, you'll see it there. And also in the video description, you will again find links to this product and also possible competitors to this product for you to consider. Those are Amazon affiliate links and we benefit from those. So we definitely appreciate it if you decide to use them. Well, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.